In this chapter, we're going to be working with the panel. Now, I've got Tone Studio open, as you can see, but this is strictly for reference. And I'll have some other references up here, such as this right here. These are the factory uh, settings. And we'll get back to that shortly. But first, what we're going to have to do is a factory reset on this amp because these are not all the factory settings. Uh, these last three right here I was playing around with after I already did a factory setting. So I figured I'd leave it, and I'll show you how to do a factory reset. It's quick, simple. If you ever get to a point where something's not working correctly in your amp, or you have to do a factory reset because you didn't quite do the update correctly, this is what you need to do, and it's also covered in your owner's manual. So let's do a factory reset. First thing you're going to do is you're going to hold, you're going to turn your amp off. You're going to hold the panel button, panel button, and then you're going to power your amp on. You're going to hold that panel button until it starts blinking. And there you go. You see these lights starting to change right here. When it finishes, you are factory reset. And then it takes a minute. And there you have it. You may go have to go up to your Tone Studio if you're using Tone Studio and reselect it. Like I just did a second ago, but then I had to reselect uh, my audio because it jumps over to Katana for some reason. And that's it. You are factory reset. As you can see, these last three the bottom ones right here were reset to factory. And let's get into using the panel. I am plugging straight from my amp from the record out into an Ultra DI by Behringer, going to uh, Presonus uh, Audio Box USB 96. I'm using OSB to record this, and I've got a Presonus PD70 microphone here. If you ever need a microphone that's kind of comparable to the uh, Shure 7MB, I think that's what it's called. You know, it's like a $400 microphone. This is only like 120 bucks, and it works really well. If you you know, stuff's expensive, man. Let's grab this guitar over here. I am using a Sterling by Music Man, John Petrucci, 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 Madge 100. And I'm gonna make sure it's in tune, which I should have done before I started this. All right. It was pretty good, much good to go. Take this tuner off here. Panel. So when you do a factory reset and you boot up uh, Tone Studio, which like I said, we're just using this for reference, it automatically boots right into the panel. So adjust the panel volume. So we were at the panel. So before we get into working with the panel, let's talk about the volumes. You got your amp volume here and your master volume here. Now there's a debate about which you should use and how you should use it. It's weird to me, but in some videos somewhere along the line, Boss told the people at Studio Rats or Boss told somebody that you should use it with your master volume, master volume cranked. Oh, that's the presence. I did that before. Master volume cranked, and you can always already hear that hiss. And use this volume as your as your master volume. Now we are at a seven on the volume. You go much higher than that. But the problem there is when people write patches, they don't write, a lot of people don't write patches with that in mind and have the volume all the way down on the patches. Because that just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense when you're making patches. So what I do, I adjust my master volume and then I'm building the patches, right? You're making the patches. You're applying all sorts of EQ 
uh, bass, all this other stuff. And then, you know, you have to adjust your gain. Let's say I put this on crunch or lead. I adjust my gain, and then I adjust the amp volume. That way, every time I turn my amp on, all my patches are at the same level. So I can switch between patches, and one's not going to blow my friggin' eardrums out, and the other's not going to make me think I'm, you know, going deaf because it's so low you can't hear it. So that's the only way it makes sense to me. Use your master volume as a master, like it's called, and use the amp volume as the amp volume because your amp volume controls the amp type just makes more sense to me to do it that way but that's up to you so let's get into this panel hole this whole panel thing it's kind of crazy like I said in another video you may may or not have watched there are some people who buy this amp and they never plug it into tone studio they strictly use it from the panel and some of them said, I get a great sound like that. And I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do to your ears. And if that's all you want, that's perfect. If that's what you can play, that's perfect. If it works for you, it works for you. But you're only using about 10 to 15% of what this amp can actually do if you're only using the panel. But we'll get into Tone Studio later on. And right now, we're just going to focus on the panel and... The limitations of it. I don't mean to sound like a cynic, but just using the panel, you are very limited to your effects and the settings on those effects. So let's take a look at those effects right now. Right here, as you can see, you got bank A and bank B. Anytime you're in bank A, these blues driver overdrive distortion those are the only boost available in bank a mods chorus phaser flanger bank a tremolo tiwa heavy octave delays digital analog and tape echo and lastly plate spring and hall reverb now going over to bank b that's any of these bottom four channels here you're going to have a clean boost, a mid boost, and a treble boost, depending on what color the or the lights are. Your mods, you're going to have DC30, a comp, and a limiter, a phaser, a flanger, and a pitch shifter. And then SDE3000 delay, digital delay, and modulate. Then your reverb, you got a plate reverb again, a plate reverb again, and a hall reverb. Now, there's plenty of reverbs in there in Tone Studio. So, once again, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Let's minimize this and let's take a look at Modern Brown. This is one of the settings that comes shipped. These are all the settings that come shipped, factory, out of the box. Plug it in, you don't plug it in Tone Studio. This is what you get. It don't think it matters what firmware you're on. I don't think they change them. This is the Modern Brown sound straight out the amp. Not bad, but man, we could really round that out with some EQ, but you can't do it on the panel. Let's look at full clean. Not bad clean sound, classic crunch. Not a bad crunch either. Lead shred. Not a lead, bad lead sound. Good solo sound. And then edge crunch. Echo crunch, I'm sorry, echo crunch. It's got that delay set in there. Modern lead. And then Vintage Clean. And Modern Power. Now, each and every one of these uses the variation, except, well, Full Clean doesn't. Classic Crunch does. 
No, Classic Crunch doesn't. Lead Shred doesn't. No, Lead Shred does. Echo Crunch does. Modern Lead doesn't. Vintage Clean does use a variation. And Modern Power does. Now, I could, honestly, I could give or take the, the variations because it just it's more like a, a, a boost on it. It's kind of like I got a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe behind me, and it's got a bright a bright button on it to make it brighter. So yeah, those are all your factory set tones. Now, honestly, if I was to go to a guitar store and plug into this amp and start playing it with all those presets and start playing with the knobs and stuff, I probably wouldn't buy this guitar. Or, I mean, this uh, amp. Because a lot of the sounds sound thin, even when you crank it up. But I've done a lot of research, like most people do. I get on YouTube and forums and stuff like that, and I talk, and you can hear demos of it where it sounds a lot better than these tones. These tones aren't bad, but they aren't great. You can do a whole lot with the EQs on them. You can do a whole lot with the settings. Let me talk about settings. Let's go back up to Modern Brown. Now, as you can see, Modern Brown on Bank A, well, if it was using it, would use a blues driver. What is it using right now? Well, it's just using the, the delay and the reverb. And for reference, let's go over to the delay. It's using a tape echo delay, and the reverb it's using is a hall reverb. Now, if we push the reverb button, you see it goes to plate, and it goes to spring. Now, if you do the delay button, digital delay, analog delay, and back to tape echo. Let's, uh, let's change that to the spring, and let's change the delay to digital and let's turn out the variation on this brown let's see how it sounds let's change the amp Now, if you wanted to add some boost to it, let's uh, let's go over here. Now, this is like just taking a tone that is already preset and making it your own. You could do it from the panel as well. In fact, let's just uh, we're gonna click on the panel button. Now we're right back in panel. Let's pick an amp. Let's go. It's already on Crunch Amp. You can't see the LED, but it's on Crunch Amp right here. And well, you can see it. You can see it in Tone Studio over here. So it's on Crunch. The gain is about halfway. We're gonna oh, we're gonna turn that volume. We're gonna turn that volume up about halfway. I think our equalizer is about good right now. Let's see what boost we got going on here. We got a blues driver going on in the boost. Let's turn everything else off except the boost. Now I think if we hit it one more time, it's overdrive. Okay, overdrive. Doesn't sound too bad. And then we got distortion. Not a high, not a bad high gain rounding out. Let's see uh, if we put variation. Too fuzzy. No likey. Now 
Now, like I said before, when you select the preset, unfortunately, the only thing you can adjust is the drive on the boosts. You can't adjust the tone, you can't adjust the bottom or the effects level. All you can do is adjust the drive. And it doesn't matter which one you're on. Let's go back over. It just, that's it, okay? Now let's play with the mod. Now we are on the mod and it's probably the, okay, it's the chorus. It's the DCE, DC30? Oh no, it just says chorus. <laughs> I think the D D C thirty. Let's see. Uh, okay, that's on bank. That's on bank B. But you're in chorus, and the only thing you can adjust when you're in the chorus is the low rate and the high rate. So let's change the chorus. This is going to be phaser, phaser mod, and the only thing you're adjusting here is the speed. And then, lastly, Flanger. This is the Eddie Van Halen Flanger. And that phaser was the Eddie Van Halen Flanger 2. So this is... And, again, you're just only adjusting the speed. So within the panel, you can't adjust anything else. Not the manual, not the width, nothing. So let's just turn off that. I don't feel like hearing that right now. And let's move on to effects. What effect? Oh. Okay, we're on the green effect, so it's a tremolo. So all you're going to be able to do is adjust the rate on the tremolo. <laughs> Next one is going to be Tiwa. Let's get a little funky. And you can adjust the uh, the sensor on that one. Make it more sensitive. And lastly on that one, you got heavy octave. See, when you go to panel, I, I should explain this on panel, it only pulls the uh, effects from bank A. If you want to go to uh, the effects on bank B, you're going to have to go to uh, bank B and then just work with one of those. So, where are we at here? Oh, heavy octane. The only thing you adjust on that one is the octane level, the octane, the octave level. Turn that all the way off, and now we're on the delay. The delay is the digital delay. Right now it's the digital delay. For reference, once again here, delay, digital delay, and the next one is going to be analog delay. And what you're adjusting here is the effects level of the del delay. Let's see if you crank it all the way up. Mm -hmm. 
And lastly is a tape echo. <laughs> Let's move on to reverb. Let's uh let's turn it all the way down. Reverb. I said that kind of funny. Reverb. And we're gonna turn up the reverb for reference. Back over here. It's the plate reverb. On here you got plate, spring, and hall. Right now it's at plate. And all you're doing is adjusting the effects level, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, the effects level. So we'll keep it at about 58. And we'll go to spring. It's a, it's a decent spring reverb sound. Sometimes, digitally, you don't get a great spring reverb sound, but this one's not too bad. And lastly, hall. So those are all the ones you can work with in that bank. Let's switch over to bank B. It's blinking right now like it is in bank B. But we're not in bank B. So let's just come down here and if we select one of these, let's see. If I push number or channel 3, it should jump down to vintage clean. No. Okay, so I don't know why that was blinking when it was on the panel. Let's, let me check something here. Hmm. Okay. When I go up to panel, it blinks. You see it right over here? You see it right over here like it blinks. Because when you're on the B side, go to Vintage Clean. See, when you're on the A side, it blinks on the channel and not on the button. But if you hold the panel button down, it switches it over, and it blinks over here too. But it's a slow blink. Okay. You know, I've had these amps for a long time, and I'm learning something new every day. So let's go back up to panel. See, it's a faster blink. But when you go over to... The B bank, it's a slow blink. So fast blink is panel. Slow blink is bank B. No blink is bank A. Hmm. See? When I was decided to put this whole video series together, I knew that I was going to learn something, too. So, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm still learning stuff about this amp. So now we're back over in Bank A. We are on Vintage Clean. And we got a lot of gain on this one. And I'm going to turn the variation off because I don't like the variation. It doesn't need to be on there. That's a nice, nice clean with a little bit of breakup. Now in this booster, if you turn it on, it's going to be a clean boost. So we're at a clean boost. It's not bad. Let's go. I think this next one's a mid boost. Yeah, mid boost. You get a lot of gain out of a clean amp. And then lastly is a treble boost. I like that mid boost much more. Back over the, let's go back to the mid boost. And let's go over to mod. What do we got for mod? For visual reference, we got the DC 30 chorus. And we're just going to adjust the chorus intensity. A lot going on there with that DC-30. I'm not a fan. Let's go on to the next one. The next one is going to be a compressor, boss compressor. Now, in this one, you are adjusting the level and sustain on it. Uh, 
And delimiter. Okay. We are adjusting the ratio on the limiter. See, it limits limits the volume. And let's see. Let's get off of that one. Let's turn that mod right off. We don't need it. Uh, let's go on to the effects. What effects we got going on here? This is a pitch shifter. Let's let's start at green. And this is going to be a phaser. Eddie Van Halen phaser. We heard this one in Bank A. <laughs> We got the flanger, Eddie Van Halen flanger. I wish I could play some Eddie Van Halen flanger. Yeah, uh, a flanger. Flangers can be funny. kind of be finicky when you're running a lot of distortion and uh, it can't quite overtake that. <laughs> you hear it going out. Let's make it slower, nice slow burn. Of the flanger. Lastly, you got the pitch shifter. Pitch shifters are always fun. Make you feel like your guitar is out of tune. So, let's turn off that and let's go to the delay. What delay we got rolling on this side? We got the SDE 3000. So many adjustments as you can see here in Tone Studio. You know what adjustment you're making here? Effects level. That's it. Next delay on that one. We got the digital delay. Are any of these the same as the last ones? Let's see. Delay, digital. Nope, the digital delay is different. So that's good. At least they have different delay on every one of these, whereas the reverb is not. So delay. That is the digital delay. And next is the modulator. Plenty of delays to choose from. Now, let me just drop down this menu here and show you all the different delays that you can choose from if you're using Tone Studio and not the panel. You've got a digital, a pan, a stereo, an analog, tape echo, reverse, modulate, and SDE 3000. So you got plenty of delays to choose from. We'll get into that a different time. Let's uh let's leave it let's leave it at uh the digital. And let's play with the reverb. So over in a reverb side, right now it's set at plate. Because you see you got plate A and B is both plate or on, on green. Bank A and B on green is both plates. Red, you got spring and plate. They love the plate. And orange is hall. So the only difference here you got one, two you play with three different reverbs, which is a travesty. Because you got more. Okay, let's uh, let's let's 
turn that delay down a bit. Let's turn it all the way off so you can hear the de hear the reverb. <laughs> And what is this? Is this played again? Yeah, played again, and then hall. Let's look at all the um, all the halls, all the reverbs that you have under Tone Studio Two. You got a plate, a room, hall, spring, and modulate. Um, I like the plate for playing metal. It works great, uh, but the spring reverb, I like the spring reverb. But, if you're using the panel, you don't have all that stuff. So, that's pretty much the gist of it. I mean, when you're looking at presence, you can adjust the presence, but you can't adjust your cabinet resonance. You don't have a solo feature on the panel. You don't have tonal shaping, global EQ, and contour on the panel. But we're going to get into Tone Studio at a later time. But those are all your options here. And I'll go over all the other effects in Tone Studio and whatnot bits by bit. And we'll rifle through that and help you learn Tone Studio quite a bit more. At, like I said, at a different time. I Next, we are going to go into updating the amp, updating the firmware in the amp, and updating Boss Tone Studio. Now, this next video is a video I did earlier this year when I had my artist. So you're going to see the front panel of an artist, but it doesn't matter because they're all the same. The procedure's all the same for the 50, the 100, the artist... And the 212, it doesn't matter, they're all the same. You're going to update your firmware, and you're going to install Tone Studio, and then we'll take a big old deep dive into each part of Tone Studio so you can learn it and truly enjoy and unlock everything that this amp has to offer.